Good day. This video demo is brought to you by Community Pediatric Society of the Philippines Palawan Chapter with partnership with Dr. Antonio Socrates Bahatala Rehabilitation Center. In this video, our objectives are as follows. First, to demonstrate the techniques of application of splints of the foot, leg, wrist, forearm, elbow, and arm. Second, application and use of arm sling and collar and cuff. And third, show the materials that are needed for splinting and sling procedures. Take this scenario. You saw a woman accidentally fell from a tree. She complained of leg pain and unable to move her leg. There is no access to call an emergency service. She has to be transported to the satellite clinic. What can you do to help her? Your goal is to transport her safely in the nearest healthcare facility like a rural health unit or to a nearest hospital. In this scenario, the concept of splinting and sling technique will be demonstrated. In this video, I will show you how to apply a lower limb splint using a banana stalk. In general, a splint is being used as a protection to an injured part of the body, to put the injured leg to correct or safe position, to provide comfort and lessen the pain. A banana stalk can be used as a splint for the following reasons. It is cold when applied in the body. It is locally available and accessible in the community. It cannot burn the skin. It is very lightweight. Aside from a banana stalk, you may use any solid materials like thick, sturdy cardboard or plywood enough to immobilize the injured leg during transport to the hospital. To hold the splint, an old cloth cut in a long strips or a commercial elastic bandage can be used. You also need a sharp pair of scissors. Technique to make a lower limb splint. Get a banana stalk long enough to hold the injured extremity. It can be cut to necessary length. Place the injured leg on a straight position with applied gentle traction to avoid bending of the fractured area. The splint should be longer than the foot and above the knee. You may place additional support on the sides of the leg. Mold the banana stalk near the ankle according to the size of the foot. Start rolling the bandage from distal to proximal position with enough tension to hold the splint. Too much tension can cause swelling and too loose cannot hold the splint properly. Make sure to expose the toes of the foot to assess blood circulation. If the bandage is too tight or there is an existing vascular injury, it will become cyanotic or pale. Cut the end of the rolled cloth into half and tie it securely. To lessen the swelling, observe the concept of rise. Rest, ice, compression, elevate. This is very important during patient transport to the nearest healthcare facility. On the succeeding videos, I will show you on how to apply a wrist splint for wrist fracture, long arm posterior splint for forearm and elbow fracture, arm splint for a middle fracture of the humerus or arm bone. Technique to make a wrist splint. Get a banana stalk long enough to hold the injured extremity. It can be cut to unnecessary length. Place the injured wrist on a straight position with applied gentle traction to avoid bending of the fractured area. The splint should be longer than the mid palm and mid forearm. Mold the banana stalk according to the size of the hand, wrist, and forearm. Start rolling the bandage from distal to proximal position with enough tension to hold the splint. Too much tension can cause swelling and too loose cannot hold the splint properly. Make sure to expose the fingers of the hand to assess blood circulation. If the bandage is too tight or there is an existing vascular injury, it will become cyanotic or pale. 
cut the end of the rolled cloth into half and tie it securely. To lessen swelling, observe the concept of rise, rest, ice, compression, elevate. This is very important during patient transport to the nearest healthcare facility. Technique to make a long arm posterior splint. Get a banana stalk long enough to hold the injured extremity. It can be cut to unnecessary length. Place the injured forearm or elbow on a straight position with applied gentle traction to avoid bending of the fractured area. This time, the elbow should be placed on a relaxed 90 degrees position. The splint should be longer than the wrist and mid-arm area. Mold the banana stalk according to the size of the forearm, elbow, and arm. Start rolling the bandage from distal to proximal position with enough tension to hold the splint. Too much tension can cause swelling and too loose cannot hold the splint properly. Make sure to expose the fingers of the hand to assess blood circulation. If the bandage is too tight or there is an existing vascular injury, it will become cyanotic or pale. Cut the end of the rolled cloth into half and tie it securely. To lessen swelling, observe the concept of rise, rest, ice, compression, elevate. This is very important during patient transport to the nearest healthcare facility. Technique to make an arm splint Get a banana stalk long enough to hold the injured extremity. It can be cut to unnecessary length. Place the arm in a straight position with applied gentle traction to avoid bending of the fractured area. The splint should be long and wide enough to cover the front and back part of the arm. Mold the banana stalk according to the size of the arm. Start rolling the bandage from distal to proximal position with enough tension to hold the splint. Too much tension can cause swelling and too loose cannot hold the splint properly. Make sure to expose the fingers of the hand to assess blood circulation. If the bandage is too tight or there is an existing vascular injury, it will become cyanotic or pale. Cut the end of the rolled cloth into half and tie it securely. To lessen swelling, observe the concept of rise, rest, ice, compression, elevate. This is very important during patient transport to the nearest healthcare facility. You may apply an arm sling after splinting for the fracture of the forearm, elbow, and arm as an added support. The next video will be on the technique on how to make and apply an arm sling. An arm sling is commonly used for injuries necessitating support from the elbow, forearm, wrist, or hand. It may be an added support to an existing splint. Arm sling helps lessen the swelling, supports an injured extremity, maintains correct position of a reduced shoulder dislocation. There are two positions when applying an arm sling. The 90 degrees arm sling position and the high arm sling position. The 90 degree sling position is used if the injury is in the area of the shoulder, arm, and forearm. In making an arm sling, we will use a wide triangular cloth. A commercial arm sling can also be used if available. Technique to make an arm sling. Place the triangular cloth on the chest in which first apex of the triangle is positioned on the elbow part. Then, the second apex is positioned on the neck. Lastly, the third apex of the triangle is slid in front of the forearm up to the neck and tied together with the second apex.
carefully fold the end of the first apex at the level of the elbow and place it inside the sling. A higher arm sling position is being used for an injury of the wrist and hand. The application of the high sling is similar to the 90 degrees with difference on the position as shown. A collar and cuff is being used for support on injuries of the elbow. Techniques to make a collar and cuff Place a triangular cloth on the table. Fold it into four parts to make it an elongated cloth as shown. Make sure the cloth is long and wide enough to provide support. Place the injured elbow on 90 degrees position. Place the center of the cloth at the wrist area, then tie it using a square knot tie. A square knot tie prevents tightening of cloth and prevents compression of blood supply to the hand. Separate the two ends of cloth and tie them in the neck area. Reassess the blood supply of the hand before and after applying a collar and cuff. We will review the videos shown previously on splinting and sling techniques. Two important concepts we should know aside from having knowledge of splinting and sling techniques. First, the concept of rise, R I C E, prevents further damage to the injured extremity. R is for rest, I is for ice, C is for compression, E is for elevate. Secondly, the concept of compartment syndrome of the injured extremity. Compartment syndrome is defined as an increased pressure on the compartment of the injured extremity, thereby causing symptoms we call the five P's. Pulselessness, pallor, pain out of proportion, paresthesia or loss of sensation, and paralysis. Compartment syndrome should be identified early and is a surgical emergency that needs a decompression procedure in the hospital. As we always say, for any suspicious injury, it's better to splint rather than omit or do not do it. Splinting and sling will do more good than harm provided you apply these concepts properly. Subsequently, once the patient is in the hospital, he or she will be evaluated further and managed accordingly in the emergency room or in a doctor's hospital or clinic. Your splinting and sling techniques surely helps your patients. I hope this short video demo will help build your confidence on applying splints 
and slings. Practice this and for sure, it will help you and you can save a life. From the Community Pediatric Society of the Philippines and Bahatala Rehabilitation Center, have an injury-free day and schools and in your home.